Hi everyone, this is April from Chime. Thank you for joining this webinar with Chime and Geographic Farming. Our guest today is Debbie DeGroat, um, CEO and founder of Exelum Coaching and Consulting. Um, before we get started, I wanted to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Can, if you guys can hear me, can you guys let me know? Um, you know, like message on chat or, or something. Awesome, perfect, thank you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Um, Debbie has published many resources on how to farm your network, including a recent collaboration with Chime Technologies. We will be sharing that with you shortly after the webinar, along with other resources here. That said, I also want to let you guys know that we are also hosting our next webinar in November 15th um, with Viral Workman, which is uh, building your A team. So we'll send that shortly to you guys at the end of this webinar, and uh, we'll, you know, we can't wait to see you guys there too. Um, we'll also be answering your questions at the end of this webinar, so we have a, a few minutes allocated just for that. But without further ado, um, I'd like to pass it over to Debbie to go. All right, thank you very much, April. And welcome everyone. We are so excited to be here today with this great group and thanks to, uh, to Chime for setting this all up for us. And of course, we wanna make sure that we maximize the value. So we're gonna move quickly, cover lots and lots of great content, and then also give you some great gifts and takeaways. So let's get this party started. All right, so here's what we're gonna talk about in today's session. First of all, we're gonna talk about how to choose your farm. And this is very critical. And you know, back in the day, you know, over the last few decades of, of real estate, what often happened is people would choose their farm based on a pretty neighborhood or based on the fact that they live there. And, and while that could be fine and good, what we do know is statistically, homeowners are moving less frequently than they used to. So they're spending longer amounts of time in each home. And that's why it's really critical to choose that farm that's gonna give you the maximum turnover. So we'll talk about that. Also, because the turnover can be lower than it used to be for geographic farmers, we wanna find ways to extract even more profit from that farm. So in other words, think of it like squeezing a sponge. We want to squeeze every bit of opportunity out of your connections and your relationships. And I'm going to give you some ideas to do that. And then we're going to talk about marketing messages. Now, as we all know, there is a lot of changes going on in our industry. And we know that there's a lot of competition for the seller and, and those great listings that are out there in your market. And what's going to make you stand out as the clear choice in your marketing messaging is when we showcase you as the super professional wise advisor. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and even more. Now, just in case you um, have a question, and by the way, April, I don't know if you're um, still able to communicate here with me. I do see the chat box. How would you like to handle the questions? Would you like me to end a few minutes early or address them as they come in? Any preference that you have on that for your group today? Um, let's actually wait for all the questions to the end of the day or at the end of the webinar, and we can answer those uh, as they come. Got it, perfect. So guys, what I'm gonna work hard to do is make sure we allow at least 10 minutes at the end. And so, you know, go ahead and type your question in if you would like. And then of course, you can always reach out to April at, at Chime Inc., which by the way, is a wonderful product and program and super helpful people there. And then if you have a question you don't get a chance to answer today that you think about later, Debbie at Excelium.com. So you can just write that email down now in case I forget to give it to you later. All right, so let's, um, let's move on. And I, I know that you guys potentially have seen a little bit about my bio and April shared a few things with you. What April may not be aware of is when I started selling real estate at the age of 18, 
my broker, my very first broker said, okay, get in the car. I want to show you something. So he drove over to a neighborhood. He was a broker that uh, you know, also sold, actively sold. He took me to an area and I saw his signs everywhere. So there was the real estate sign with his name on the top. Then we drive a block and there was another and there was another and there was another. And he said, get out of the car and let me show you what I do. And he had cards, one for each house with their name and facts about the people. And he started door knocking and I followed along. And it seemed so easy. You know, people said, oh, hey, Alan, how are you? And he'd say, oh, how was your daughter's wedding? Oh, it was great. Well, hey, guys, now that the home is, is big and the last child moved away, any plans on moving? Oh, actually, yeah, we're thinking about in the new year. And I'm thinking, man, this is easy. So right from that very first day, I locked and loaded on the fact that I needed to be a geographic farmer. Now, if I look across the nation and as a coaching company that has the opportunity to coach some of the brightest and best in the industry, uh, I would tell you that 90% of top producers are geographic farmers. What I would also share with you though is it's not for everyone. So on this webinar, I'm not telling all of you, you should go run out and get a farm. In fact, I wanna give you all the facts and details so you can decide, is this the right thing for you to do? Because you see, at Excellium, our whole belief is that everything we would do with you or for you, if you were working with us, would be customized to your strength your market opportunity, and your personality. So as you go through this webinar today, how you'd apply that to you is, is this something you would enjoy and would be likely to commit to? Because if not, don't take it on, okay? Because it is an investment, and it's an investment that requires some time. So just to end that story quickly, I did select a geographic farm. Because I was only 18, I did what my broker told me to do. I knocked the farm every month. I, I mailed consistently. I did all the stuff he did. And within a very short period of time, I had market dominance and, and maintained that until I decided to shift my career to the coaching side of the fence. So uh, I do believe in it. My husband's still a full-time agent, 30 years in the business. He has a very successful geographic farm. My daughter joined him in the business. She's a farmer. So, you know, it is something I think can be one valuable segment of your business. Now, I want to move on because, again, you guys know my bio, so let's get right into the content here. Um, you know, there's a lot of clients that, that we work with that when they come to us, just like you see with Gail here, they've been 21 years in the business. And some of you, and the reason why I put this up here for all of you, of course, you know, I want you to know we, we do a good job for our people, but more importantly than that, I, I want you to know that no matter where you're at in your career today, one year, five years, 20, 30, it's never too late to implement new tools and techniques along with the basics. Now, especially, as Gail says, in a changing real estate environment, we know that it's gonna take multiple streams of opportunity to create the business that you need. So potentially geographic farming might be one of those, those uh, pieces. So here's what we're gonna give you as our gifts to you today choosing and working and dominating your geographic farm report and a marketing business plan. And in this marketing plan, you're gonna identify your methods of engagement, what marketing messages are appropriate for the demographic of your area, your budget, and, and so these are all important things, your marketing calendar. It's very simple, very easy to complete. And then we're going to send you this exciting digital book that, that I had the great fortune of being able to work together with the Chime team to bring their insights and my insights 
and put this terrific little book together for you, this ebook, and that's going to go out to you today. And then at the end, I'll offer you an opportunity if you have questions for my team and would like to find out how to get connected to us. We'll share how to do that because we're not going to sell you anything on this webinar today. This is just all about great information. So you don't have to do a thing to get your gifts, okay? The fact that you registered for this webinar, automatically these will be sent to you. If tomorrow you think, oh, I don't, I don't have my gifts, then check your spam. Sometimes it gets filtered. And if you still can't find them, you can certainly reach out to Chime or you can reach out to me, Debbie at Excellium. We are very committed to making sure you get as much value as possible. All right, so if you've never farmed, I'm glad you're here. But if you are a farmer, I, I hope that you will find some gaps. Now here's why I say that. You know, where there are gaps, there are opportunities. So in other words, it's unlikely that you are doing everything perfectly or doing absolutely everything you can. And I'm not saying that to make you feel bad. I'm saying that to encourage you that if you're not extracting all the profit you'd like to extract from that farm, then there's probably a few things we could tweak and adjust. So if for an example, if you came to us today and said, I'd like to be in coaching with all of you I'm not going to start throwing new things at you. The first thing I'm going to do is go to who you are, what you're doing already, and close those gaps. So then we can add new things. If you're a farmer, let's look today at how we can close those gaps. So we're going to talk about selecting the farm, marketing strategy, and shining as the marketing expert. So let's talk about why is it called farming to begin with. Well, you think about it, you choose a piece of land, you prep and work the soil. So the prepping and working the soil, that's your marketing materials, that's your engagement with the homeowners in that community, water and tend it. That's the ongoing connections, staying top of mind, right? Letting them know you are the wise advisor, the clear choice, and then ultimately, it yields a crop of listings. So to get to that crop of listings though, we need a community marketing business plan. Now, what I'm gonna share with you that we'll send you as a gift is what you see here on the screen. And sorry, for some reason, it's a little bit blurry, but it certainly won't be when it arrives in your inbox. This is part of a, a product we have, the Community Marketing System Program, and I just peeled it out of there for you because I wanted you to go into the new year with a very clear strategy. Now, let's talk about something. Because of the fact that people today have more opportunity to go online and to find assistance without us, that's exactly why we have to take a strong, firm, and aggressive stand that you're going to expand your reach into your local community. And we have to be very strategic about how we do that. Now, here's the good news. The good news is, statistically, I have read, and, and I've read this in more than one place, that 75% of homeowners say that they chose the agent they chose because they knew them. There was a relationship with them, there was a trust, there was a rapport. 75%. Okay, so guys, we're not gonna win them all. Some are gonna go around you, they're gonna go to a discount broker, they're gonna do something online, and yet if you expand your reach into that community, 75% potentially will work with you. And then another statistic I read was that 50% of homeowners move within 20 miles of the current home that they have. Now, we have the pleasure of specializing in resort markets, so we do work with a lot of resort market customers, and I know that that stat is not true for every market. 
And yet, for most of you, if you expand the reach into your community very strategically, you're going to have the business that you need. But as we're choosing our area, we want to choose wisely. So we talked a little bit about turnover. And I, you know, I may even have a slide coming up on that in a minute, but let's just stop here and then we're going to move on to competition. People always ask me, what is the rate of turnover I should look for in a geographic farm? Well, my answer would be as much as possible. But I would say a minimum standard of four to four and a half percent. Because when you do the math, if you took a look at in a 12 month period, so let's go back 12 months, how many homes sold in that area? Now, I'm going to just pick a number here. Let's say there's a thousand homes and 45 sold. And you go, oh, wow. Okay, so that's, you know, four, what, let, me, let me just do that. Yeah, 4.5%. And I want to do something else here. If you were able to capture, let's say, 30% market share. Now, it used to be possible for a dominant farmer to control 80%. It's a little tough these days. Maybe you can do it in your market. Good for you. But let's say you could, uh, you could control 30%. Well, if there's 1,000 homes, 4.5%, I get 30% of those, I'll have 13.5 transactions. I'm going to pick a fairly conservative average price, let's say across the country, 350000 Oh, well, hmm. So that's going to give me 40, what would that be? So 350 times... 13 equals 4.5. Why is my math? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I think I need to put my glasses on, but you get my point, right? Sorry. You, you have to do the math better than I just did, but you have to do the math. You have to say, okay, if I look at my average sales price and I look at my average commission, what that farm can yield for me, what is that ultimately going to net me? But here's the big deal about the competition. All of that could look very good on paper, but you got to study that competitor. Because here's an example. Let's say that as you're looking at those 45 transactions, you see every other transaction or every few transactions is one agent. And you see, we'll call her Mary Smith. Mary Smith, Mary Smith, Mary Smith. And you do a little research and you realize that Mary has been there for a number of years, that Mary lives there, that Mary's a member of that country club and very involved. Guess what, guys? Maybe you want to move across the street and pick a different area. Now, I'm not saying that because you couldn't take her on. You really are going to have to ask yourself, though, how badly do you want to do that? Because it's going to be an even deeper time and money investment. So study your competition. Now, we talked about the disruptors. Everybody's talking about, you know, the online lead portals who are plotting to take your leads away. You know, guys, the way I look at this, though, is there's always something, right? There's always a challenge in our business. Those of us who have been in the real estate industry for a long period of time, we know it could be interest rates, it could be economy. I mean, there's always something going on. What we have to do, though, is not put our head in the sand, be aware of it, understand how it could potentially impact us, and then work to improve our game. So again, how do you improve your game? You increase your market knowledge. You improve your marketing. You improve your listing presentation and the value you bring to the table. So you've got the rest of this quarter to get ready for the year ahead. And part of your plan for 2018 is you must increase your range, your reach, and your influence in the community. Now, we talked for a minute ago about being a market expert. 
So you see, everybody knows that they could go online. You know, they could Google and check the value of their properties. They can go to Zillow, trulyarealtor.com, wherever they want to go. They can do that. You know, that's the data. We used to control the data. We, we don't anymore. We have data, but they can access data everywhere. So then the next level is knowledge. They can get answers to their questions by Googling again and looking around and, you know, gather some more information. But the top of that pyramid is wisdom. And that's you. You need to be that wise advisor because here's what the consumer knows. They know that that online data is not always accurate or exactly applicable to their home. They know that. What they also know is that some of that knowledge or information out there isn't real or they don't know how to interpret it. Think about it this way. If you, um, you know, heaven forbid, <laughs> we'll say for sure, had to uh, be on trial for some very, very serious thing. Now, you could go to LegalZoom.com and look up information and pull documents and you could read a, a, a text, a law book on your particular case and study all of that. But yet, at the end of it all, you don't have the wisdom to put all that into action to interpret it to win the case and that's why you would hire an expert. So here's something interesting. You know, one of our coaching faculty members here at Excellium is Alan Dalton. Alan Dalton is the former CEO for 10 years of Realtor.com. And you know, one of the things that Alan and I often talk about is this wisdom, this knowledge. And he said something to me the other day, and I want to throw this out there for you guys to consider. He said, real estate agents often market their service. You know, if you, you look at some of their marketing pieces or you go to their website, there's a lot of conversation going on about the service they provide. And he said, that's fine. And yet, he brought up a top law firm the big bucks, the big guns. He said, if you go to their website, it's always about expertise and results. So think about that. Look at your marketing pieces. Look at your website. How are you showing off your expertise and your results? Now, I do get it that some of you on this webinar with us today, you might be brand spanking new. And you might be thinking, but wait a minute, I don't have any results yet, right? Or I, I barely am learning to have my expertise. But then you can lean on the power of your brand. And you can use the brand's expertise statistics and reach into that market. We have accomplished this in your market. We have sold this many homes in your market. So when you do a good job, you're informed, you're knowledgeable, you're well prepared. If you don't have your own personal statistics in that market, use the company's stats. All right, here's something funny that I have noticed over the last couple of years. It seems like sellers are taking longer to get their homes on the market. And here's what I mean by that. I'm not, I'm not speaking of turnover. I, I think you guys know what I mean, though. They, they call you up. And they have you out and they say they're thinking of selling or they speak with you on the phone. And it's this frustration of months before they actually pull the trigger, sign the listing and get it on the market. And that never used to be that way quite so much. I have just an opinion, just a thought here. And that could be that because it is so easy for them to go online and do their searches early and start building their data and their knowledge and all of that, they may potentially be reaching out to plan sooner than they are ready to actually hit the, you know, get the home on the market and get it sold. So now more than ever, you're gonna have to be very committed to building a pipeline of future 
quality sellers. So now, more than ever, you're going to have to have tools, you're going to have to have technologies, you're going to have to utilize services that, like, like Chime, that have capabilities that are beyond your own reach so that you can maintain these databases and these pipelines and these conduits of opportunity that could take one, four, six, even maybe 12 months to materialize. And, and not be frustrated with that because I think some of us who've been in the business for a long period of time, we were taught just turn and burn, right? Scoop off the hot ones and the heck with the rest of them. But that's not really going to work for us any longer. And when I talk to most real estate agents and they talk about, you know, their lead follow-up, it takes, it, it's one of their weakest areas. But we can't afford to make that the case any longer. 70% of your business will come from your follow-up. And geographic farming is, is like a giant group that you're going to need to follow up with relentlessly and consistently to stay top of mind until that opportunity bubbles to the surface and you can grab that listing or that move up, move out buyer or seller. But let's talk a little bit about effective marketing. And, and, and guys, I, I really don't want to offend any of you that are listening here today. But I feel out of respect for the time that you dedicated to be here with us. I owe it to you to be as honest and direct as I possibly can be. You need to really be careful about what you're spending your marketing dollars on. You see, if you think about the quote disruptors, right? All the leap portals who are going out there and, and reaching out to sellers and attracting them in, all of the things that they are doing, it's very strategic. It's very high level. Now, just like some of you, back when I was farming, I dropped off pumpkins and 4th of July flags. And, you know, we used to do something that we thought was really fun and cute. It was forget-me-not seeds, you know, and kind of makes sense. You know, I put my label on the back and forget-me-not. Very cute, very fun, nothing harmful at all. But let's think about this. How is that actually addressing a homeowner need? It's not. It's just saying, here I am. I want to be your friend. Remember me. How is that setting you up as the wise advisor, the consultant? It's not. You know, how is it entering the conversations that might be going on in the minds of the homeowners that live in that area. It doesn't. And it's so expensive, am I right? You know, the, the printing and the mail or the, the delivery fee. So we've got to think of that as our little gold nuggets of impact. And, and granted, I don't want to mislead you that any one marketing piece will necessarily flood you with leads, but we want to be as strategic as we can. So let's look, as you see there on the screen, what are some of the, I'm going to call them marketing themes. What are some of the marketing themes that could be potentially very hot in your geographic farm? You know, how to know when it's time to move up to another home or stay and improve your current home a.k.a. the move up system. Now, here's why we created, uh, we actually have these consumer guides in our community marketing system product, but, but guys, the reason I'm showing them to you today, you're welcome to copy the themes. You're welcome to create your own guides and your own postcards, but here's why that one in particular struck me. You know, a few months back, I was flying on a plane, reading, you know, stuff as I flew around to the next event, and I read an Inman report. And in the Inman report, it, it commented that for decades, real estate agents have been preaching to homeowners 
Now it's time to move up. But they've never been addressing the concerns behind that. How to move up, when to move up, how to decide should I move up or stay and improve my current home? What's the system to do that so that I don't end up homeless? And I thought, wow, I just like all the rest of probably most of the real estate community have been guilty of doing that in the past. So when you're putting your pieces out there, what's going on in their head? Well, if we look at the one to the left of that guide, why is my house not sold? What went wrong? Well, you know, do they want to hear it's their price? No. Do they want to hear it was probably ineffective marketing? Sure. And of course, our guide and your words could clearly say, of course, price is part of marketing, but it's not the only part of marketing. So you can just see here some examples and downsizing with distinction. If you can't read that writing on the bottom there, I want to read it to you because it's a great little tagline. How to, um, in, how to enlarge your lifestyle while sensibly selecting a smaller residence. Right? So people don't want to move down to something they don't enjoy. But 40% of the real estate is owned by baby boomers who are now often thinking of downsizing, right? So just think about this. What in my geographic farm, based on who they are, based on how old they are, and based on the trends I'm seeing going on in that community, what would be my themes that would showcase me as the helpful advisor the valuable um, add to the neighborhood, someone that's bringing something helpful to those homeowners, right? So that's why I want you to really think about your marketing budget and complete that community marketing system game plan. And when we do all this right, we can grow a crop of listings. But just like having a real farm, you're gonna be, need to be a little bit patient. People always ask me, how long will it take me to realize results in my farm? And guys, I cannot answer that question for you because it depends. It depends on the turnover. In some of your markets, it depends on seasonality. And it also depends on the actions you take. And most importantly, how much you're willing to do to engage personally with the homeowner. All right? So, I know that some of you absolutely will not door knock, will not consider it. Well, then we're going to have to find other ways to connect with those homeowners. Or it could be not even allowed. You know, it's a, a high rise, it's a gated community. So maybe I can hold community events at the, uh, you know, with the association. Some of them have those little community, you know, clubhouses. Um, if it's a high rise, maybe there's an art gallery or a wine bar at the base of the building and I could hold some event or I could hold a, a sneak preview for the neighbors. You know what I often hear too, and this is kind of a funny one, in the high rises, what agents who farm those buildings will often do is either get in because they have a listing there or bribe a doorman and they actually ride the elevator up and down at the busy times of day. Because you see, they know they've got to find a way to engage those homeowners if they want to grow their crop of listings. So is geographic farming for you? It is if you're willing to be patient to some degree. It is if you're willing to map out your community marketing system plan and run that plan like a machine. You know, agents always ask me too for marketing. What's the frequency? How often do I need to hit that farm? Well, if you're going to really dominate it in most markets, you're going to need to get a mail piece to them twice a month. That's for most markets. Okay. If you are trying to take over a territory, you may want to be more aggressive, at least in your first few months of farming. You know, I remember when I started farming, I think I was actually mailing something 
every single week. You know, every week, every week, every week. Yeah, it was a little bit expensive, but I wanted to fast track my reach into that farm. So you're going to need to look at your competitors. You're going to need to look at your local market. And then you're going to need to set your marketing strategy based on that because there are some parts of the country where agents just don't farm. You might be able to do one piece a month and engage with the homeowners and get some great traction. But I want you to look at the farm and make your decision very carefully. My recommendation and my recommendation in the book would be a minimum of two pieces per month. Because you see, the number one reason that farmers fail, they're just not consistent. So they, they do some marketing and then they get busy and they back off for a couple of months. Or they do some marketing and they get discouraged and they back off for a month or two. You cannot do that. If you want to dominate that farm, you lock a marketing calendar, you lock a schedule of engagement, you set aside a budget, and you run it like a machine. Now, you should look for ways to save money, absolutely. You know, Every Door Direct, EDDM, probably many of you know that, Every Door Direct mailing, that's actually through the post office. It's based on carrier route, and it may not fall right exactly precisely on top of your farm. It may extend a little bit outside the farm, it is the most affordable method of mailing. So you probably want to write that down and check it out if you're not familiar with it. Far less expensive than bulk rate. Now, some of you may even have lenders, and it depends on your estate and the laws and your broker's policy, so check all that out. But you may even have lenders who are willing to co-brand and co-market with you. And then, of course, we want to look at, as I said earlier, making that postcard or that marketing message count. And I'm going to give you an example. I see at times people send things that are, um, well, I'll give, you, I'll give you one example here really quickly. A lady sent to me uh, back last April, I guess it would have been about April, a postcard mock-up of something that she was going to send to her geographic farm. It was very pretty. It had flowers and it said, Happy Mother's Day. And it said, you know, from your neighborhood specialist, we'll call her again, Mary Smith, you know, Happy Mother's Day, have a wonderful day. So she sent that to me and said, Debbie, what do you think about this as my marketing piece for my new farm? I said, well, you don't know anyone there yet, right? No, not really. I'm just kind of getting started. Okay. I said, well, first of all, not everyone in the farm is a mom. I'm not sure how excited they're going to be to be wished a happy Mother's Day by a stranger. It doesn't do anything to showcase you as an expert or advisor. There's no call to action saying, call me for X information. How much is this going to cost you? And she said, well, about $500. And I said, you know, you might be better off to take five $100 bills and drive through the neighborhood and toss them out the window on Mother's Day. They'd probably notice you more. And of course, I'm being silly and we laughed about it, but we put that aside and we worked on a marketing piece that would showcase her knowledge and expertise. Okay, so I want you to be consistent, guys but I don't want you to be consistent just throwing stuff out there to quote, get your name in front of them. We need to do more than just that. We need to be much more strategic, a word I've said over and over and over on this webinar for a very good reason. You know, if, if you take a look at uh, some of the clients that we work with, we often see 25, 35, and even 50% growth in their business in a year. And here's the good news about that. And this is where I want to encourage you, you know, watching the webinar today, that when you do sit down and you look at your business and you take, for example, geographic farming, and you create a system 
a structure, you put that strategy on top of it, you tweak and adjust and improve your skills to be the best at your game that you can possibly be, that type of growth is possible without working more hours, right? So, and that's what I want. I want you to have a better quality business working smarter, not always working harder. Now, now guys, I put this, the strategy slide up here, and also we're going to open this up for questions. We wanted to allow plenty of time for your Q&A today, but I want you to know what we would do for you on this strategy call. You will not be speaking to some salesman on a sales floor. That's not what we do here. If you request to talk to us, to find out how we could work with you, how we could help you, whether it's farm or otherwise, you simply go to www.businessstrategycall.com and what will happen is Gary, my customer relations manager, will chat with you, find out what you need help with, address anything for you that he can, and if you'd like to speak with a coach, he's going to schedule that for you, and that's compliments to, to you for you know being here with us today. But let's go ahead, and April, why don't we open it up for questions that, that you might see there on your screen, or we want to open up the chat box if anybody wants to, to pop in a question. It can be, um, I'm just thinking of some of the things that I often am asked while, while we're waiting for them to see if they have questions for us. I'm often yeah. asked, um, how big of a farm should I take? And I think that's actually, April, one thing we neglected to address so far. Guys, I would say 500 to 1,000 homes is a good place to start, but smaller is better than bigger that you can barely ever afford to market to. So smaller and more frequent, and then expand that reach as you have more profit and are able to do so. Okay, April, so, so go ahead if you have questions there that I might not be seeing. Yeah, so we asked earlier, um, and a question came in, what are the most important topics to cover in a monthly newsletter? And is once per month sufficient enough? Okay, terrific question. And I believe that newsletters are a very valuable uh, marketing piece, not just for your geographic farm, but also your database, your past clients and your sphere of influence. And here's why I love newsletters so much. They'll actually keep them around. Now, I'm not against an e-newsletter, and some of the brands out there have just beautiful e-newsletters that they've created for their agents to utilize. I wouldn't discourage you away from those, not at all. It will not get you the same result, though, as a printed newsletter. So you probably want to do both. Now, in a perfect world, I would love to see your past clients and your farm get a newsletter every single month. That would be perfect. And what would I have in that newsletter? Well, here at Excellium, we actually do provide our clients with a newsletter. It's called Lifestyle Advisor, and it's customizable for them. They can edit it, make changes, do what they want to do. But we fully develop the content, and here's what we put in that newsletter. So I'll share that with you guys. Always on the front cover, there's an important real estate article. Now, when you saw those themes on the screen, those are about 10 different hot topics, right? Downsize, move up, buy an investment, selling through divorce. So we showcase a hot topic on that front page. And in that hot topic, we always have a call to action to reach out to the agent for more information. So that would be you, you know, to reach out to you. Now, then I like to put into the newsletter things that are not about selling or buying necessarily, but tie back to real estate. So we might have an article on, you know, the top five home improvements to make that add value. You know, we might have an article on home prices across America because they find that fun. But then we'll also do things like travel or health tips, 
you know, just a, a combination of really interesting information, but always showcasing a key theme with a call to action. So, so guys, I, I do like them. They do keep them. And if you can't afford to do it all by yourself, what I do see some of our clients do is they give their lender a space in that newsletter to write an article and double, you know, co-brand and they share the cost of that. But that's really, you know, up to you guys. And again, check with your, you know, legal team and all the stuff you do. I do see that done. Um, also, if you had to, you could say, well, I can only afford to do it every 60 or 90 days, and that would still have some terrific value. Um, okay, I do see a question, April, popping up. So is our coaching just on how to teach us to farm, or is it more involved? And also that would pertain back to if someone chose to reach out on the strategy call to get some help or have a conversation, would that be just about farming? So thank you for asking that. And the answer is we coach you on your entire business. Um, we have a team of some of the best coaches in the entire nation, all 24 to 40 years of experience in the real estate industry. About 60% of who we coach are teams. Uh, we coach leadership. We also work in luxury markets, resort markets, and really what we look to develop with our clients is an overall customized success blueprint. Farming may or may not be for you a piece of that. And that would really be up to you to determine, of course, along with the assistance of a coach, should you choose to reach out to us. So again, if you book that strategy session, Gary is gonna to talk to you about what you're looking to accomplish and then he's going to bring that to me because I know very well, you know, each of my coaches' strengths and we have a faculty approach, so I'll get you to the person you need to speak with. Okay, so um, let's sidetrack April 2, just a little bit more back to the, uh, the door knocking, okay, because I find this often is a really hot topic. You know, if door knocking is allowed, should I do it? Should I not do it? What time of day should I do it? What do I say if I do it? So those are questions that always come up. Again, guys, you have to make this decision about whether to knock or not. Um, I always did. My husband still knocks in his farm. And the way I approached it is I would take my farm and I would go out the first month in the morning. And I would typically block an hour and a half. Now you have to decide your tolerance and your schedule. So I would block an hour and a half and I would knock approximately 75 doors in that hour and a half because the lots were pretty small. And I would work my way through that farm. And then the next month I would go out and I would knock the doors in the afternoon at three o'clock and do my hour and a half. Because here was my thought. Maybe I'm going to catch a certain group in the morning and then the next month I'm going to catch a potentially different group in the afternoon. So that was just my strategy. Yes, I always left something on the door. And if I spoke to people at the door and they were nice and gracious, I often wrote them a thank you note. Okay, so let's see. Question. How do you start a farm in an area where you've not past had past success or it's been over six months since your broker sold a home so in other words guys if that homeowner said how many homes have you sold in this area this agent would have to say none you know actually when I took on my geographic farm I had not had any success because I was brand new and it was not an area that my broker had any track record in and, and quite frankly, I just, I didn't really give it that much thought. I just tackled it and went after it. And my thought would be, if they say to you, how many homes have you sold in the area? You have a script, a prepared answer. Well, that's a great question. I'm so glad you brought that up. Actually, 
I haven't sold any or I haven't sold many. And that's exactly why you're going to want to hire me. Because you see, I am dedicated to dominating this market and you're going to have the benefit of that passion and I'm going to work overtime to get your home sold. So let's get to work, right? Because people do like that. They do like to list with agents that they feel are going to be extremely hungry. Um, what are my thoughts about door knocking in your own neighborhood? Totally up to you guys. You know, it's funny. I find agents have a strong preference one side or the other. For example, some people say, I absolutely do not want to work my neighborhood because I, I want to go home. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want people knocking on my door on the day off. I don't want to worry about how I have to dress when I go mow my grass or whatever. Um, but if you're going to work your neighborhood and you like that, by all means, go door knock. You know, one of the farmers in the area where I live, um, she goes out and knocks doors and she's got her little kids and they skate behind her. So they're skating along and she's knocking the doors and she says, hey, I'm your neighbor and I work here in the area. And she really uses that as, as a plus because, you know, some people might be rude to their neighbor, but not that often, right? Um, so it's up to you. I didn't prefer to work my neighborhood. I just didn't want to, but many, many geographic farmers have incredible success, especially if they're heavily involved in that community. Then it would be almost a shame not to. If there is something on the door that says no soliciting, do I pass or do I knock? Well, I used to knock. Because now, again, remember, guys, I was very young when I got into the business. My broker said to me, sometimes they just bought the house and that sign was already there. Or they put it there and they don't remember it's there. Or they put it there because they're so susceptible to salespeople, they're trying to ward them off. He told me I was supposed to knock on those doors. So I did. Once in a while, somebody would say, did you see the no soliciting sign? And I'd say, well, actually today I'm just here to provide valuable information. I'm not here to ask you for anything. So I did it. But I'm going to say this though too, if you're not comfortable, if you don't want to do it, then skip those doors. You know, you're not going to go to farming jail because you did. Just like if there's somebody rude or mean, don't knock on their door. If there's a big dog that throws themselves against the door every time you knock, skip that one. It's okay. It's absolutely okay if you want to fine tune that group of who you're actually going to target when you knock. All right, so Matthew, I think that you've got some tips to share with them about how some of Chime's services can really align on the technology side, the tools, the resources to make this whole project a little bit easier, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Excellent. Thank you, Debbie. I really appreciate that. Um, my name is Matthew. I'm the Business Development Manager at Geographic Farming. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> that's the name of our business. Um, we were actually acquired by Chime um, April, what was it, six weeks ago? Um, just recently we were, we were acquired by Chime. And um, really what, what we do is, you know, we've identified the, the same points you, you made in the webinar, Debbie, is that, you know, agents fail because of lack of consistency and, you know, lack of strategy behind farming. And, and that's really what we developed is, is an automated farming process where we help agents design their mail pieces, print them, and mail them. Um, we have a fantastic print house and mail house. We print on the highest quality materials and we have designers on staff to really help agents in, in the process of farming. And it's, it's such a great partnership and, uh, and marriage with uh, Chime Technologies um, because now we have, we have the technology of a, a fantastic client relationship manager um, to, to help agents really manage their database and, and manage the leads that they generate in their farm. And, and so, guys, if we go back to, to systems, you know, there's a lot of things that you could do yourself, but then the question would be when you get busy, 
you know, and, yep. and just running ragged and you don't have some support or some resource in either generating or mailing or managing in some way this for you, I find that's when the wheels usually fall off, Matthew, you know, so that's I, right. sometimes agents will look at this and say, well, yeah, but that's going to, you know, that's going to cost me or that's going to be a little bit more than I budgeted for. But I think they often forget that they're not factoring in the cost of their own billable time or, or a right. staff member, you know, to do it for them. And it's just so much easier. I think the trend today is outsource as much as you can so you have less internal pieces to manage and they can go focus on what they do best. That's that's exactly right. You know, I, I have a saying and I say it all the time and you know that is do what you do best and outsource the rest. And um, you know another saying we have is, you know, here at Geographic Farm we do the things that you can't do, won't do or shouldn't do. And I, I really truly believe that you know, really 90% of our clients fall into that shouldn't do category. Not that they're not capable of designing a mail piece or coordinating it to be printed and coordinating it to be mailed. You know, really at the end of the day, it's should they be doing those things? You know, just like you touched on, it's, you know, is that the best use of their time? And um, that's that's really where we come in. And, you know, what what we do is our, our pricing is pretty transparent. We charge a monthly management fee depending on the frequency that you want to mail. We have plans that mail once a month, twice a month, and then we have one that really kind of ties into what you said is breaking into a dominating market, a dominated market. We can do three times a month for the first three months and then twice a month for the rest of the year. And then our clients pay for the print and postage and we offer uh, EDDM, we offer bulk mail, and we offer first class postage. Um, so it's it's really transparent. Uh, we charge a monthly management fee for our services, and then the print and postage is just a pass through to our clients. And so it's it's really just about automating it and staying consistent. That's that's the key. You touched on it, and I mean it's you're so right. And that's really kind of what we found is like you said. Um, you know they they get going on a farm for two or three months. They start to get busy, and then the first thing they stop doing is farming because it's just time consuming and they just don't have the bandwidth to do it all. Right. Yeah, and that's the shame. Um, and, you know, when we talked about squeezing the life out of the farm, if you've got a system that's running, so you've, you've chosen how often you want to market and what your budget is, and then now you talk to, you know, to Matthew and his team and you find out how that they can help you with that, now you can be free to pursue the expireds in the farm and use your time and energy to do that. You can be free to go extract the absentee owners in the farm and contact them and sell them additional properties. You can be free to take an open house on a listing in the farm and really turn that into an open house event for the neighbors because you're not stuck in the mud of trying to crank out the stuff that you need to crank out and just looking at the post-it card on your neighbor's desk copying that and throwing that out in the mail and who knows if it works right so so guys just to be clear before you know we we end the webinar today I do want you to know that my team cannot assist you with a geographic farming product that Matthew is offering because I I don't I don't work for Matthew or work with Matthew I'm a guest coach invited in so if you want to know about the product he's talking about then that's who you would contact and I'm sure they'll give you a way to get in touch if you need to reach out to them. So the business strategy call if you chose to take advantage of that with me, that's about your plan, your business, your growth overall and how that might work um, if you were to choose to work with us. So Matthew, I just know my team can't answer the questions your team can answer. So I'm going to send them over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I, I appreciate that, Debbie, and you know, thank you for you know having me, and uh, well, thank you for speaking with us. We, we really appreciate it. And um, yeah, anybody that you know wants to learn more about uh, geographic farming, the company that that can help you automate the farming process, um, you know, April, maybe we can share a, a link where they could um, you know learn more about us um, and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So. 
we want to thank you, Debbie, for sharing your knowledge on this. I, I certainly learned a lot <laughs> about farming, and I hope a lot of you guys also too. Um, thank you guys so much for joining this webinar, and we, you know, we want to be respectful for your time. So um, we'll be sending all the resources again at the end, um, along with the recording of this call, um, so you guys can reference back to that uh, for for any future um, at any future time. So. Um, and we'll send you a link to uh, Debbie DeGroat's Excelum um, Coaching and Consulting and, or, sorry, Excelium. And we will also send you uh, some information about Geographic Farm. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Hey guys, thank you, April. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you all of us to, for joining us today. We really appreciate that. And, and good luck in your fourth quarter. Let's get ready for the new year ahead. Talk to you all soon. Thank you.